this is the microwave method on how to temper chocolate. I have shown you how to do it on the stovetop and how to use a thermometer. Now I do recommend using a thermometer for the microwave because you'll have a shinier chocolate, but it is not necessary as long as your chocolate is tempered to begin with. If your chocolate looks like the one on the left, you're actually going to have a little bit of trouble using this method without the thermometer because of the fact that it's not properly tempered. To get a nice shine on chocolate like this, you're going to have to temper your chocolate. It'll also let you snap it and it won't melt easily in your hand. First, you're going to need any amount of chocolate you want, three ounces minimum, I recommend because it's easier. And if it's tempered, it works without using a thermometer, but if it isn't tempered, it doesn't. So if you see like white on it, it's not tempered and I recommend using a thermometer. You're going to put all but a quarter of it into a bowl and heat it 15 seconds at a time. At first it won't look like it's melted and you're wondering why I'm telling you to stir it. It's because it is melting on the inside. Stir it about 15 to 30 seconds. Put it in the microwave for another 15 seconds. Now you're going to see that it's starting to melt and it becomes very thick and hard to stir. Give it a stir anyway, another 15 to 30 seconds. Let it have a chance to melt. Heat another 15 seconds. You're going to continue this until you see it almost completely melted. Now, if you get to the point where there's only a little bit that is not melting, like those little chunks right there, after you've stirred it 15 to 30 seconds, then you're going to start to heat it for five seconds at a time. At this point, if you don't have a thermometer and you got it completely melted, you can use the seated method. You won't have a nice sheen but it will be shiny and it will snap. It just won't be as nice as if it's fully tempered. This is a prime example of why the tempering is recommended to use the thermometer. I want to show you what the temperature looks like even though the chocolate is fully melted. It is about 84 to 86 degrees and it's sticking around about 86.5 degrees, which is around 30 degrees Celsius. Now the reason this is a problem is because the fact that it's not high enough to melt that chocolate when you put the seeded chocolate in and you don't have the appropriate sugar crystals so it's not going to be as pretty. You're going to have marbling effect here. So I recommend putting it in five more seconds at a time until you get the appropriate temperature which I'll put up here so you'll know depending on the type of chocolate you're using. Again, if it's not at that appropriate temperature, heat it another five to ten seconds. I only have 101 degrees Fahrenheit here which is around 38 degrees Celsius and I need this to get up to at least 104. Once I got to 104, I can then use the seeded chocolate. Again, if you don't have a thermometer, you can go ahead and try it, and all you have to do is once you get it melted, it is do the test where you put it on a piece of paper and you will spread it out, and then you will check it to see if it gets in temper within two to three minutes of spreading it out on a piece of paper. But the goal is, is to get it between 86 degrees Fahrenheit to 89 degrees or 30 to 32 degrees Celsius and then it will be ready to be used. At this point again, you can double check yourself, put it on that piece of paper, you can dip the paper in or you can just spread the paper with a little bit of chocolate like this. Let it sit for two to three minutes and see if it hardens. If it hardens and gets a nice sheen, then you know you're ready. If not, just start over again. We're going to check it right now. It looks like it's ready. I think it's going to be wonderful. Yes, it's got a nice sheen to it. This is a milk chocolate, so it's not as shiny as a dark chocolate would be, and it should snap really nicely, just like this. At this point, you're ready to use it for whatever you want to use it for. And if you like, I will show you what I do with leftover chocolate. Your hands should come clean, and that's another indication that it's ready. I just like to throw in cereals or pretzels and just mix them up and then spread them out on some wax paper or parchment paper until they're fully dry. This is a great way to use up the leftover chocolate and you don't have to be really pretty about it, especially if you're just eating it yourself. Now if you wanted to, you could dip it in there and shake it off and get it looking really nice, but no one really cares what it looks like when you're at home. Look at what it looks like. It's got a nice sheen to it. It doesn't stick to your hands when you're done, and that's all there is to it. Visit us at jacksonsjob.com for more recipes, and as always, happy baking.